Hello, hello, I'm Beth Joey and welcome back to my YouTube channel. That sounded really panicked. If you're new here, welcome, welcome. This is the channel where I paint my face, turn my camera on and talk about some books. I am joining the train a little bit late on this one and I'm going to film a These Books Will Self Destruct in 12 Months video because they have been on my TBR since I first started my booktube channel and actually I've deleted all the videos from when I first started so I first started it even though you guys don't know about it and that was like two years ago and I haven't read them and I have no impulse to read them so I've put them on about three different TBRs and I'm gonna put them on this one too and hopefully that will make me read it. I believe this was first done by Becca from Becca and the Books and then it's been sort of repeated a few times by a few other booktubers. I'll link the ones that I found down below in the description if you want to go and check those out. But essentially the idea is I pick 10 books that I have 12 months to read or they are off my TBR. So let's just very quickly jump right in with the first book. This one is Scythe by Neil Schusterman, which yeah, it's literally been on my TBR since the beginning and I haven't picked it up and I have no drive to pick it up and it's not even that long so it's it's no there's no reason but anyway it's about um, in a perfect world the only way to die is to be gleaned by a professional scythe when Citra and Rowan are chosen to be apprentice scythes they know they have no option but to learn the art of killing however the terrifying responsibility of choosing their victims is just the start corruption is the order of the day and Citra and Rowan need to stick together to fight it then they are told that one of them will have to glean the other it sounds kind of star cross romance -y, or at least star across friendship um I've heard really really good things so many of the booktubers that I that I watch the videos of have liked this book but I don't know I don't know what about it it's just I'm not interested I think the concept is fascinating but I'm just not interested next up we have the lies of Loch Lamora by Scott Lynch which I bought at the same time as Scythe but my excuse with this one is that it's it's a bit longer no my kidding that's not an excuse but anyway, it's about uh, the Thorn of Camor is said to be an unbeatable swordsman, a master thief, a friend to the poor, a ghost that walks through the walls, so it's a bit like Robin Hood vibes, I think. Uh, slightly built and barely competent with a sword, Loch Lamora is, much to his annoyance, the fabled Thorn. And while Loch does indeed steal from the rich, who else would be worth stealing from, the poor never see a penny. All of Loch's gains are strictly for himself and his tight-knit band of thieves, thieves the gentleman bastards. The capricious, colourful underworld of, an, of the ancient city of Camor is the only home they've ever known, but now a clandestine war is threatening to tear it apart. Caught up in a murderous game, Locke and his friends are suddenly struggling to just to stay alive. It's sort of a thief plotline. I don't know why I picked it up. I think I saw it on someone else's um, video and I thought, oh, that sounds interesting because the way they described it sounded interesting. Next up for something a little bit different, we have Kiss My Cupcake by Helena Hunting, which of course, if you can't tell by the very colourful springtime sort of cover, it's a romance and it's a food based romance. So I don't know why I wouldn't love this. It's just, I don't know, something about the cover just feels really immature to me. Anyways, it says, Blair Calloway has planned every Instagram worthy moment of her cupcake and cocktail shop launch down to the tiniest detail. What she didn't plan on, Ronan Knight and his old school sports bar next door opening on the very same day. He may be super swoony, but Blair has spent years obsessing over buttercream and bourbon to have him ruin her chance at success. From axe throwing his place to frosting contest hers, Blair and Ronan are constantly trying to one-up each other in a battle to win new customers. But with every clash, there's also an undeniable chemistry. When an even bigger threat to their business comes to town, they're forced to call a temporary time out of their own, on their own war and work together. And the more time Blair spends getting to know the real Ronan, the more she wonders if it's possible to have her cupcake and eat it too. I think the only reason why I haven't wanted to read this is because it's enemies to lovers, and I'm not a huge fan of that particular style of romance, but um, yeah, I don't know. We'll get there eventually. <laughs> Next up, we have All the Stars and Teeth by Adeline Grace, which again, I bought at the same time as Scythe and Loch Lamora, and I just haven't gotten around to reading it. It's, I believe, sort of more of a high seas fantasy romance, and I don't think I've ever read any high seas fantasy romance, so maybe that's why I just like don't know what to expect. But anyway, it says, as princess of the island kingdom Visidia, Amora Montara, <laughs> Amora Montara reminds me of the guy in The Princess Bride, who's like, my name is like Diego Montana or something like that. Anyway, anyway, she spent her entire life training to be High Animancer, the Master of Souls. The rest of the realm can choose their magic, but to secure her place as heir to the throne, Amora must master the monarchy's dangerous soul magic. But when her demonstration goes horribly wrong, Amora is forced to flee. She strikes a deal with Bastion, a mysterious pirate. He'll help her prove she's fit to rule if she'll help him reclaim his stolen magic. But sailing the kingdom holds more wonder and more peril than Amora anticipated. A destructive new magic is on the rise, and if Amora is to conquer it, she'll need to face legendary monsters, cross paths with vengeful mermaids, and deal with a stowaway she never expected. We'll risk the fate of Visidia and lose the crown forever. 
And yeah, I think it's just because it's sort of like a high seas pirate based romance. I've never really had a drive to read anything like that. So um, yeah, hopefully we'll read it. Next up is frankly a beautiful, beautiful edition of a book. But I think the only reason why I haven't been reading it is because I don't think it's fantasy romance and I do tend to like fantasy romance the best and that is Witches Steeped in Gold by Shannon Smart. This one is about uh, order divides them, revenge will unite them. Um, it's about two women. Iraya Adair has spent her life in a cell, heir of an overthrown and magically gifted dynasty. She was exiled from the island nation of uh, Aika? but every day brings her closer to freedom and vengeance. And the second woman is Jasmine Carriott, who grew up dressed in gold with stolen magic at her fingertips. Daughter of the self-crowned Doyen, her existence is a threat to her mother's rule, but Jasmine has no intention of dying. Dying, not dining. She has every intention of dining, just not dying. Sworn enemies, the two witches, enter a deadly alliance to take down the woman who threatens both their worlds, but revenge is a bloody pursuit and nothing is certain except the lengths Araya and Jasmine will go to to win this game. Another book that I have absolutely no excuse for because I love this author's previous book that I read by her, which was Seven Husbands of Evelyn Hugo, which tells you that this is by Taylor Jenkins Reid and it is Malibu Rising, which again I bought at the same time as so many of these other books and I just haven't had the chance to read it. I don't tend to read sort of contemporary style books without a romantic element. God, I sound like a freaking broken record, but I don't tend to. Anyway, it says Malibu, August 1983. It's the day of Nina Reva's annual end of summer party and anticipation is at a fever pitch. Everyone who's anyone wants an invite to catch a glimpse of the famous Reva siblings. Nina, the talented surfer and supermodel, brothers Jay and Hud, one a championship surfer, the other a renowned photographer, and their adored baby sister Kit. Together, the siblings are a source of fascination in Malibu and the world over, especially as the children of legendary singer Mick Reba. By midnight, the party will be completely out of control. By morning, the Reba mansion will have gone up in flames. But ahead of that first spark in the early hours before dawn, the alcohol will flow, the music will play, and the loves and secrets that shape this family will all come bubbling to the surface. I have literally no excuse for not having read the next three books, because they're all fantasy romance, so they're all literally the definition of what I love. But, um... Anyway, the first one is Servant and Dove by Shelby Mahirin, and this one is a chunker, so I'm gonna say that that's why I haven't read it yet. I think the other reason why is because the blurb literally says nothing about what this book is about, and I know I could do research, but when I do research, I often read spoilers, so I don't want to, but I, I want more info, but not too much info. I'm being picky. Anyway, the blurb says, bound as one to love, honor, or burn. A witch and a witch hunter trust, thrust, not trust, thrust. I can't speak today. It's a holy matrimony. There was only one way such a story could end, a stake and a match. That tells me nothing. I don't know if I can pick up a book this long and know nothing prior to reading it. Maybe that's a lesson that I should learn. Another fantasy romance, but what's even worse is this one is tiny and it's Fable by Adrian Young. And I think the only reason I haven't read it is because I've heard a lot of people saying they didn't really like it. What it's about is traitor, fighter, survivor. As the daughter of the most powerful trader in the Narrows, the sea is the only home 17-year-old Fable has ever known. It's been four years since her father abandoned her on a legendary island filled with thieves and little food. To survive, she must keep to herself, learn to trust no one, and rely on the new unique skills her mother taught her. The only thing that keeps her going is the goal of getting off the island, finding her father, and demanding her rightful place beside him and his crew. To do so, Fable enlists the help of a young trader named West to get her off the island and across the Narrows to her father. But Fable soon finds... But Fable soon finds that West isn't who he seems. Together, they will have to survive more than the treacherous storms that haunt the Narrows if they're going to stay alive. Fantasy romance, bit of a, like, not forced alliance, but you know what I mean? Uh, sort of story. I, I love the names of the characters. Fable is obviously, like, a type of story. And then West is a direction. So it's like neither of these names are names. And it's tiny, but it's part of a series. I don't know why I haven't read it. I have no excuses. The most hilarious thing I think about this one is that the two blurbs on the back for other authors saying what they think about this book are both authors in this list, which is Adeline Grace, who, author of All the Stars and Teeth, and Shelby Mahirin, author of Certain Pimp and Dove, both saying they love this book, and I haven't read either of their stuff. Actually, maybe I should read all these three books in one vlog. Let me know if you'd like that in the comments down below. The last fantasy romance is definitely very, like, whimsical and magical, and I've heard some people say they love that, I've heard some people say they hate it, I've heard some people say the writing is very lyrical, and I don't know if I've had much exposure to lyrical writing, if... If I have it, I haven't been aware of it. And that is The Night Circus by Erin Morgenstern. This is another one where the blurb tells me 
literally nothing. I'm just gonna read it to you and we can figure it out together. It says, the circus arrives without warning, no announcements preceded. It is simply there when yesterday it was not. So that tells me there's a circus that's mysterious. And it is non-committal because it's there for a day. I'm just losing my voice a little bit now so I don't know how much filming I'm actually gonna get done today. But the last book on this list is Not A Happy Family by Shari Lapina, which I bought at the same time as Malibu Rising, Scythe, I'm looking because the books are over there, uh, bought at the same time as All The Stars and Teeth, Fable, The Night Circus I think as well. So all of these books I bought at the same time and I just have not read them. Not A Happy Family is a murder mystery and it's supposed to be likened to Knives Out, uh, the movie with Daniel Craig. I think one of the Ryans is in it. I love that movie, so I'm expecting to really like this book and I have no excuse for not having read it yet. It's been like at the front of my TBR for a really long time. But anyway, it says, in this family, everyone is keeping secrets, even the dead. In the quiet, wealthy enclave of Brecon Hill, an older couple is brutally murdered hours after a tense Easter dinner with their three adult children, who, of course, are devastated. Or are they? They each stand to inherit millions. They were never a happy family, not a happy family, uh, thanks to their vindictive father and neglectful mother, but perhaps one of them is more disturbed than anyone knew. Did someone snap after that dreadful evening, or did another person appear later that night with the worst of intentions? That must be what happened. After all, if one of the family were capable of something as gruesome as this, you'd know, wouldn't you? I love the ominous question at the very end, it always makes me cringe. But anyway, this is the last book in this list. It's a murder mystery. I think it's the only murder mystery on this list. So yeah, I love murder mysteries. I don't know, I haven't read it. This is a very heavy stack, so I'm only gonna hold it for a couple of seconds. But these are the books that are going to self-destruct in 12 months if I have not read them. As I said before, I might do a vlog for all the Stars and Teeth, Fable and Serpent and Dove because they're all kind of connected through the blurb on Fable. But let me know in the comments down below if, which one of these books you want to see me read first, if you'd be interested in that vlog, if you'd be interested in any of these other books being combined together for a vlog. Also let me know if you've read any of these books, loved them, hated them, that always helps me pick which one to read next. As always, like, subscribe and hit that notification bell to be notified when I release new content and I will see you lovely people in my next video. Bye!